greetings and salutations. I am Imperial Zodiac and here's something a bit new and this is a DDO review from a somewhat new player so let's just get into this. So let's just get started by saying DDO or Dungeons and Dragons Online is a MMORPG which means massive multiplayer online roleplay game. So now I'll be overviewing the game and later on I'll be sharing my thoughts and feelings about it. So here we are at the character creation screen where we'll be making a random character for the purpose of the video. So there are three classes for each slot there and there, there is one payable class for each section which is melee, spell, and specialist. And they also give you a general more info and stats tab on the right part side of the screen which is really helpful. Now we have three already made stats sections on the left part side of the screen and a customized one which I would recommend for you guys. There are four free to play races in this game and four buy to play races in this game which are each individually bought. And the races are Human, Elf, Halfling, Dwarf, which are the free-to-play ones, and Warforge, Half-Elf, Drow Elf, and Half-Orc, which are the buy-to-play ones as seen on the screen. This is what sets this MMORPG from the rest, because from the normal, typical MMORPG, it's just create character, create how they look, create a class, and then bam you're in the game but now for this you have to be very smart on what ability points you choose because they could affect you later on in the game and if you are a bit confused on the side of each ability there will be a description of what it does in the game and if you are still confused to the right there is a scroll bar of the abilities and more info on it. This is where we assign our skill points so that it will kind of choose our role in the party and how we kind of play the game and since I'm a rogue I have 36 skill points and for the normal class I think it is about 8 and the skill that has little asterisk on it means that we're not specialized on that class and if we try to use a point on that class the total mod will only go up by 0.5. If you are still confused there are list of what the class does on skills. Okay now we pick our feet which I like to think of as somewhat of a trait and since I'm a human, I have a human bonus feet. And feet are also very useful in the game as they will affect your role as well. If you are confused again, then on the right it will show you the feet and everything about it. And that was just a brief overview of what we've just done and now we are at character customization and as you can see there are quite a vast amount of customization things here and I would rate it about 7 out of 10 because most MMORPGs that I played aren't that vast at character customization as this one. Then you just pick what's your name and this is optional which is your surname and your alignment and in the wiki it means alignment is used to restrict advancements in certain classes as well as usage of items. In DDO, only the first six alignments are available to players. Evil is left for NPCs and monsters. Now on combat in the game, and it's not what you think as a point and click style combat system, but a somewhat aim style combat system where you aim and left click on your enemies, but it still follows the old school Dungeons and Dragons pen and paper style system where 
if your attack level and your dice roll combined and the dice is a 20 sided dice it is below your opponent's AC which is armor class you miss all the time and that kind of frustrates me a lot in the game but attack skills on the other hand are not merely attacking but they add status weaknesses to your enemies for example if you use the trip skill they'll fall unconscious for a while and they can't attack you momentarily if you didn't notice already i am a level two and you might be asking to yourself why would a level two review this game and the xp rate is just so low because it took me like three hours to get from level one to level two and it makes up for that because the level cap is also up to 20. there are more on combat like weapon types and weapon resistances but i won't cover that on this video and now let's just move on to quests so the quests and stories in this game just truly hook you in because unlike any other MMORPG, I couldn't be bothered to just read the quest line and the storyline because they didn't give me the right atmosphere to enjoy them. Another great thing is the Dungeon Master's narrating because whenever you're in a tough spot, he can always guide you to success. And it's also a fulfilling atmosphere while he is talking and you are slaughtering your foes. Also in dungeons, you may encounter the game or the dungeon giving you a sneaky puzzle just like the one here. There are also traps and I have encountered them but I forgot to record the footage. And those are the things that I think that you will be wanting to know if you're planning to play this game and enjoy it and you will have to look past the low XP rate and the low level cap and you might need to get a gaming PC but they have good graphics, a great story and quest. It's filled with uniqueness and it's kind of old school with the dice rolls and the great character customization. If you did enjoy this video, then you may want to check out my other content, which mainly contains of Let's Plays and unboxings and whatnot. And I will be doing another review on something I play with in doing the Let's Plays. And as usual, please may you like to support me and rate, comment, and subscribe.